hope all of you found looking at the Kingly Psalms last week helpful. And those of you that had an attempt at writing one, maybe understanding the difficulty in in how we look at authority today and its relationship with God. Um, yeah, I hope that was a helpful experience. We are now moving on and these are wisdom psalms. So that is very similar to sort of Leviticus, um, Song of Solomon's. Wisdom literature in general in uh, in the Old Testament is quite a specific subset. So we're looking at those psalms that reflect that same uh, characteristic of writing style and stuff. So hopefully you'll understand it more as we go on. Uh, let's dive in. Psalm 1 from the New International Version. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on it on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of wicked leads to destruction. So there we have it, Psalm 1. Now, this psalm you, often was used as like a preface for the entire book. I mean, it still is a preface. That's why it's Psalm 1, not Psalm 100. It is setting the scene of the entirety of the Psalter. So read this and you will understand what these books, these poet poems are all about. And what does it give you? Well, it gives you maybe a slightly unhelpful helpful binary um, option. Either you follow the path of the good or you follow the path of the wicked. And we can see, you know, if we can discuss as we go along, how the wisdom uh, literature sometimes is, is very, seems very sensible and you can easily apply it. So that's why... Often when people are quoting the Bible, it will be part of wisdom literature, like Ecclesiastes gets quoted, um, you know, and that you'll you'll often have heard scripture and not known that it was scripture at all because it's it's seeped into the sort of modern vernacular. Um, but other parts of the wisdom, it, it seems either simplistic or not to apply. And here we have this, you're either on one road or on the other and one is obviously unmistakably good and the other is unmistakably bad and I mean perhaps your morality is similar to that I know that I find mine being more complex however I do believe that there is it's set back that the wisdom literature isn't isn't meant to tell you what you are seeing in the world but actually tell you uh, of a greater reality so you know one of my problems uh, that I would say is you know it says oh the path of the wicked well that ends quickly it dries it fizzles out it they they don't prosper and you go who are you looking at what what are you counting there and what I'd say then is that, that there's a, a deeper, more eternal reality to that, that God is saying through the scripture to us that these powers that seem so huge and so all encompassing actually to God are nothingness, that they fizzle out. And that's exactly why it's wisdom literature. That's exactly why we need to hear it, because it's not how it seems. If we look at Israel's history, you know, look at Egypt and the power of Pharaoh and subjugating the whole entire lot of them. They, that doesn't feel like, oh, they don't prosper. 
the wicked fizzle out. That does that's not what it seems like at all. So, you know, d don't expect that through the wisdom literature we are going to hear confirmed our observations of everyday life. Instead, it's like an openness, a willingness to look at reality through God's perspective, through God's eyes, and that is a very, very different idea altogether. So let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, we pray that through this week we might have a openness to see things with fresh eyes, a new perspective. We pray that through the text and through our interaction with it, our thinking, our praying, that you may speak to us again. We pray that we won't hold anything back from you, but that we would, would be open and humble so that we can learn through all that we encounter. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.